Like dogs marking their spots, graffiti writers are stinking up the area. These nights, teenagers with spray paint cans are everywhere. And despite the efforts of police, there's no let up. The one known as cab to hundreds of thousands of commuters meanders across the four-lane freeway and begins to bomb the crew's name. A bomber is somebody who pretty much is a vandal. He's gonna put up his name, his piece, his throw up or whatever, you know, pretty much his throw up and tag, you know? No matter how you slice it and you say that it's not vandalism, it's vandalism. So a bomber is gonna do that. You know, his whole purpose is to bomb. I first got my name, uh, Cab, from, uh, from a friend of mine who uh, I went to high school with uh, that wrote Key One from the Modern Art Kids. I, w I previously was writing other uh, aliases. I first wrote Raven in 86, then uh, I left that and started writing Kendo and a little after, short time after that. I actually wrote e -Rec for a while too. Uh, started tagging buses and whatnot, you know, and then I ended up meeting uh, Richard, which is uh, Key One from MAK, and uh, he gave me two names and uh, he says, would you like to change your name? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I want something shorter, something I could put up and be more effective, you know? And uh, he brought me a, a paper with two throw-ups and two names. One was Cab, the other one was Gunner. I had throw-ups for each one, and I, I really liked Cab because it was short, and I knew that there was there was not another Cab around in LA at the time. So I picked it up, and I says, you know what? I'm gonna put this up, and I'm really make, make a household name of this, you know? So I took it from there, and this was, you know, late 80s, you know? And I, I that's when I really took off into the the actual graffiti world, you know, of, of, of picking up a can and, and, you know, actually painting pieces and throw-ups and, and just bombing all out like it was at the time, you know. So I grew up in a small town of Boyle Heights, you know. So I think all of LA was rough, but at, at the time in the, the mid to late 80s, it was really rough. Poverty-wise, you know, at home and uh, in the streets, there was a lot of drug addiction, a lot of dope, a lot of, a lot of neighborhoods that were constantly battling it out and shooting it out. You know, the violence was there, you know. We were ex highly exposed to the violence while doing graffiti, you know. So that was a big challenge for everybody to overcome to try to do this and still uh, stay alive, you know. I mean, even if you weren't at the time from a neighborhood, you, you were gonna get uh, jacked or beat up, you know, because uh, of whatever reason, it was just the, the norm, you know. You just got hit up. So it was, it was a constant battle and a constant challenge to, to continue to create and still stay alive, you know? When I grew up, it, it was it was a poverty home, you know? My dad barely made men ends meet and uh, we we're very poor. What I had was what I needed, not what I wanted. So in a sense, I, 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 I wished I had a lot of other things in life and I didn't have them that other kids had at school. But what I had was the most important thing was I had the, the, the essential things I had at home. I had a roof, I had a bed to sleep and something to eat. I know my family all along knew, knew what I was doing. I just think that they, they just let me go, you know, let me do, they figured that I would probably sooner or later, you know, end up quitting or end up realizing that well, what I was doing wasn't right. I think that uh, that's what happened, you know? I know they were concerned about me and my safety. Like I would be concerned on my kids today, you know, but there's something that I never understood either, you know. Maybe it was something that they couldn't control and they knew they were, that I was too far ahead and that, that I wasn't going to stop, you know. The only thing that was probably going to stop me was uh, ultimately jail, you know, getting locked up and, and you know, that was probably going to teach me a lesson. I did some kind of counseling, you know, when I was a teen and to try to, to, try to overcome that, you know, and try to, you know, uh, not do the things I was doing, but that didn't work because I was I had the, the the pool of my friends, you know, that were constantly calling me, you know, the the influence was there from the older older friends I had, you know. No matter how much I tried to 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 stay good, you know, there was always that influence, you know. I mean, it was just a, a good a good uh, recipe for me to continue, so I didn't stop, you know. So I thought I was in already, I thought I was known, you know, at least I was known within the, the, the graffiti community, like I said, and which was, it was a good feeling because, you know, and that's what I wanted to, that was my whole goal, you know, was to, to get noticed because there was already a scene, you know, with bigger people that, that I wanted to impress. That's what it was. I was kind of new in the game and I wanted to impress these older riders, all the OGs. I want to be known as somebody to somebody, you know, I wanted the kids to look up to me like I was looking up to them. Yeah, the first time I got caught riding, I got caught riding in 1987 on, on an RTD bus. Me and a friend of mine were, were tagging uh, the bus. We had caught two of them already, and the third one rolled up, and we didn't realize there was a cop behind the bus. They let us tag, and then went, ran back to the sidewalk. They corralled us and got us, took us to the station. I was underage, so they took me to the East LA station, and uh, I remember they called my my mom my dad, and they drove up there, and uh, they, they weren't having it. They weren't too happy. Uh, I think it was just uh, an eye-opener for me. It, it kind of gave me a taste of what it's going to be like if it if it happened again. 
So I got released and uh, my dad really got on my case. I think that I got, I got grounded. I wasn't able to come out for a few weeks, but then it went back to normal. After, after everything settled down, I ended up going back to painting graffiti, you know? Tried to be a lot smarter, you know? And not get caught, you know? It's like a boxer who gets in the ring and gets knocked out every time or knocked down every time and loses the bouts. Then, you know, that's the reason for him to hang up the gloves, you know? So in this case, if you get caught all the time, that means quit, you know? Move on to something that you can do and you, you could succeed in because you're not gonna be good at, you know, doing art, if, you know, or legal art if you're getting caught all the time and getting hit with fines and jail time and whatnot, you know? Probably the most dangerous, I'd probably say the, the freeway signs I did back in the early 90s. Um, that was probably about the dangerous, most dangerous thing I, I've done there. And then the, the trains I painted out in Europe, I think that was that was also kind of one of the highlights of, of I would say, of my uh, my time painting, you know? Well, I uh, the way you get up to those freeway signs at the time was uh, you monkey climbed them. Kind of like, you know, they were just so broad, you know, that you could wrap your around, not, not physically around the whole thing, but it was just enough for you to cradle it and just climb up. I mean, I, I did it by hand. I didn't use no belt, like people would, you know, bros or none of that, you know. People uh, always asked if we used the rope or, 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 or some kind of device, and it, was, it wasn't the case, man. Uh, we just basically a monkey, a monkey climbed it, you know. Was I, I went up there and I did standards. I did a few, my name in, in, in a few letters, you know, in, in various letters, and then I, the remaining uh, uh, surface that was that was available, I painted standards. So I wrote my name a bunch of times, you know. Uh, as far as like uh, art and respect people's art and whatnot, I want to say um, you want to try to respect other people's work in, in general, you know. As to you, you would like you know for people to, to respect you, you know. That that is something unwritten rule that. That, that we know, you know, morally, but in graffiti, it, it's all the same, you know? I think it starts at home. If, if you don't get taught these uh, values and uh, these uh, uh, dignity and respect uh, issues, then you're not gonna bring them, or you're not gonna emphasize them out in your world, you know, or in your life. That, that's important, that needs to be uh, taught at home first. When you're young, you, you have no directions, no direction in life, so you're kind of like living a day, day by day, you know? As, as you get older, you get wiser, and you start realizing what you really wanna do in life and what's expected of you from your family and friends and, and the people that surround you and love you as to doing the right thing. I'm a firm believer of that. If you're not happy with what you do, you're not gonna be ever good at it. So you have to come to your terms at some point and say, this is what I wanna do and this is my passion. My passion is to paint, my passion is to create, my passion is to be a truck driver, my passion is to be a welder, my passion is to be an architect and I'm gonna be the best that I can at it because that's what I like to do, that's my passion. So yeah, you know, I think it's, it's all been worth it for, for the major good part of it, you know? I, I can't say that I regret anything. I'm just happy that I'm still alive and still able to be doing this and still be able to, to live a life because that could have been taken from me a long time ago. And this happened a few times where I could have been gone. I came close to, to, being, to leaving this world a lot of times. And I reflect on that still because things could have happened. And things almost did happen, even, you know, before all this started. But, you know, for some, some godly reason, I'm still here. I guess it's not my time yet. I'm just here to continue doing what I'm doing. That's just creating, trying to be a good person and a good, good artist in the world, you know?